Pathfinders, a big welcome back and welcome to 2024. Wow, it's a whole, we've had a whole year since I saw you last. <laughs> well, we started a new year, haven't we? How are you all? Tell us your news. What have you been up to since we last all met together? Have you had a lovely little break with your family and friends? I hope you've had fun. I'm sure you've been outside. Tell us what you've seen. What have you discovered? Have any of you been outside exploring in nature? What's the weather been like where you are? Have you spotted any new animals or birds around and about? Tell us all the news, Pathfinders. I can't wait to hear it. Good morning, a big good morning. I can see some of you have just started home ed. You've just started your homeschool journeys. A big welcome to you. And if you're here first time for Pathfinders, well, welcome to our session. This is a live nature themed session led by me. I'm your Pathfinder pack leader, Kirsty. But Pathfinders wouldn't be anything without all of you. So you lot are even more important than me. A big happy new year to you all. Hello to loads of you. Oh my goodness, there's so many of us here. I definitely can't read out all of your names. I'll shout a few. Oh, someone's got snow where they are. How exciting. Hello, Nikki and Nancy. Nelly and Jacob. Hello, Eva. Hello to Isabella and Nathaniel. Hi, Joshua. Joshua's got snow. Oh, exciting times. Are you going to head out and play in the snow today? I wonder if you've got enough to build a snowman. Uh, hi, Alex. Hi, Aurora. Hi, Emily. Oh, so many of you joining us this morning. This is going to be a good session, I can tell. Shall we get our brains thinking straight away? What do you think, Pathfinders? Right. Let's have a few questions. Now, some of these are questions that I've been thinking about recently or things that have just popped into my head over the last few weeks. And I've thought, I know, I'll ask the Pathfinders. Shall we have a little look? Why does, now this is one that I thought the other day, why does the sky look blue even when it's cold? Now that is a question that puzzled me. So when it's a really, really cold day, like it is here today in Wales where I am, but the sky is a gorgeous bright blue. And I even thought this morning, oh, I don't know if I need a coat to go out, but I definitely did. It's freezing out there. Any ideas? Hmm. Why does the sky look so blue when it's cold? Shall we find out? The sky looks so blue because cold air can't hold as much water vapour in the air. So only small water droplets are formed. And the low sun in the winter and the lack of all that water in the air means to us the sky appears a much brighter blue in colder weather. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, here's another one. Help me out with this one, Pathfinders. Why, oh why, oh why, doesn't it snow much near the coast? So I live really near the sea and zero snow so far this year. Absolutely none. So I'm quite jealous of those of you that have got snow today. So why do you think if you live nearer the sea or the coastline, well, why doesn't it snow? as much there. Any ideas? Hmm. Yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Shall we find out? Inland places, so places away from the coast, are much more prone to snow than coastal sites because in winter the temperature uh, is cooler, of, the temperature of the land is cooler than that of the sea. Oh, I see. Yeah, so the land gets a lot, lot colder than the sea does. Oh, so that's why you guys that live far away from the sea, you get all the snow. <laughs> oh, no, and Theo, your first time watching live. A big welcome to you. You made it. <laughs> Let's have a little look at the next one. Now, this is another puzzle. Which country in the world has the most snowfall each year. So I got to thinking, well, if I'm not getting any snow near the sea in Wales, then who is getting all this snow? Where in the world does it snow the most each year? So give me your guesses, Pathfinders. Which country do you think 
gets a lot of snow. We've got some guesses coming in already. Greenland, Iceland, Canada or the USA. Mm, what do you think? Antarctic, Russia, Greenland, Iceland again. Mm, what do we reckon? Another vote for Canada. North Pole, South Pole, Italy or France. Oh, lots of good guesses here. I don't think anyone has guessed the answer. And this really surprised me when I found this out. I want to see your surprised faces. I'll show you the exact face I did. Huh? <laughs> Japan experiences the most snow. So this country, Japan in Asia, has mountains as tall as 10,000 feet. And when storms in the northern Pacific Ocean cross that mainland, they become trapped in these mountain, big mountain ranges in Japan. And as they're trapped, they then get so full up, they disperse and dump huge amounts of snow on the mountains. I know. Wow. Huh? We've got lots of <laughs> what reactions to that. Okay. Here's another question. Our theme today is all about the winter sky. So you might notice a bit of a theme running through these questions. Here's your next puzzle then, Pathfinders. Why can we see stars on some nights, but not on others? The other night here, it was a beautiful starry night. And then last night, no stars at all. Hmm, any ideas? Why do you think? Hmm. Another thing to think about with this puzzle is where I used to live was in quite a busy city and I hardly ever saw stars there. But now that I live in the countryside, I see a lot more. So have they always been there? We've got a few suggestions coming in. <laughs> Clouds or the cold weather. We've got another one, light pollution. Oh, good thinking. So, thicker cloud cover can cover all the stars and planets from our view. So, those of you that said clouds, well done. Those of you that said light pollution, you're right too. Light pollution from bright cities at night can also make it really difficult to see the stars. So, that's why I could hardly see any where I used to live, why I get to see more now. But yes, the cloud cover can block all those stars and planets from our view. Right, so that got me thinking. You can see my train of thought here, can't you? Stars in the sky, right. Then I was looking at the stars thinking, why are they all twinkly? So why does a star twinkle? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> those of you that know that rhyme. So why do they twinkle? Any ideas? Hmm, let's have a think about that one. Are they kind of flashing? I mean, what are stars made of? Do any of us know that? Oh, we've got some guesses coming in because they're fire, light reflection. Mm, they're burning. Oh, good guesses because they're gas. Yeah, let's have a little look, shall we? So stars seem to twinkle in the night sky because of the atmosphere of the Earth. When the light from the stars enters our atmosphere, filters down to, our, to, to near our planet, it's affected by the winds and the areas of different temperatures. And this causes the light from the stars to twinkle when we see it from down on the ground. So it's the wind and all of those different temperatures in our atmosphere disturbing the path of that light. Wow. Well, fantastic. That has definitely warmed my brain up, Pathfinders. I hope it has for you too. <laughs> now, today is an exciting day, not just because it's the first Pathfinders of 2024, but it's the first where we get to hear from you guys with our Pathfinder Pack presenters. So a few of you might remember a while back last term, I asked Pathfinders gang, who would like to take us on a nature walk? And luckily, lots of you said, yes, please, I would. So today we are being taken on a nature walk by, well, three different Pathfinders. We're going to start by seeing Bethan and what she got up to on her nature walk this week. 
Let's take a look at Bethan's nature walk, shall we? And find out what she's been up to. Today's nature walk is all about the winter sky. Today the weather was rainy and sunny. Look how deep and wet this puddle is. And the sky was really cloudy. You can tell it rained by the squelchy mud and the deep river. Look at all these happy quacking ducks. I even got a video of a duck washing its wings. In the nice cold pond. Here's a video of one bird walking to the other bird. Look at this pigeon in a bush. Here are some of the clouds I saw. All of the clouds are different. The clouds got darker and it began to rain. Here is the sun coming out. The ducks were swimming. And the pigeons were watching. And all the leaves were falling off the trees. Then once I got home it hailed. Can you see the ice crystal? While it was hailing I kept myself busy inside by making myself a cloud board. This is a stratocumulus cloud. They can bring light drizzle. These are autocumulus clouds, normally in round clumps. These are cirrus clouds. They're normally up high and very thin. And that was this week's nature. Bye. <laughs> well done, Bethan. That was brilliant. Absolutely. What a start to our Pathfinder Pack presenters. A big thank you and a well done. I'm sure all of you are very proud of Bethan for producing that. That was awesome. I loved watching that hail bouncing across the ground. How exciting. And a few of you had hail in the holidays by the sounds of it. And I liked as well the pigeons that you spotted watching the ducks. Those ducks were having a lovely time splashing in the water. And I thought, I wonder if those pigeons are jealous. <laughs> so well done, Bethan. You captured so much and lots of information there about the winter sky as well. So thank you for that. Well, I thought we'd look to the sky and think about what birds we might see flying around at this time of year in the day and in the night. Hmm. Can you guess what I'm thinking of? Birds might we see in the day, but also just as active and flying about in the night. Have you guessed? I think so. So our each week in Pathfinders, this term, we're going to have a little focus spot. And this week's focus, you guessed right, is on owls. Let's take a little look at owls, shall we? focus on owls. Let's start with some owl facts. Female owls are bigger than males. Their colours blend in with their natural surroundings, making them camouflage. Owls can rotate their necks 270 degrees. The most common way to refer to a group of owls is to call them a parliament. Now let's take a look at some of the most common owls in the UK. 
Any ideas what this type of owl is? It's a barn owl, usually white on its lower parts and golden brown with grey markings on the upper body. It has a white heart-shaped face with dark eyes. Barn owls are most often seen at dawn and dusk, though they can be seen at night or even hunting during the day. It flies over fields and can often be seen around farmland. Let's look at another owl. Any ideas what type of owl this is? Any guesses? This is a tawny owl. These are larger than the barn owl. The tawny owl is mostly brown but can include reddish or grey feathers. It has a large rounded head. Mostly nocturnal and rarely seen flying during the day. It flies with fast wing beats and long straight glides, often only flying short distances from tree to tree. How about this owl? What type of owl is this? It's a lot smaller than the other two. That might give you a clue. This is a little owl. A small owl with dark brown feathers with white streaks and spots. There are larger whitish markings that give the impression of a false face on the back of their head. Its yellow eyes and prominent whitish eyebrows give it a very serious facial expression. Little owls hunt by swooping down from a perch, but will also run across the ground in pursuit of their prey. They are most active at dawn and dusk, but can often be seen during the day too. Have you ever seen an owl? We'd love to hear about it. That's owl for now. So have you ever seen an owl? Some of you have. You've been commenting along as you watch that video. And some of you have seen, I think, seen tawny owls. Some of you, have any of you ever had the chance to be really up close with an owl? Maybe even hold an owl? I've held one once and it was a lot lighter than I expected. Um, their bodies are actually really small, but they just have so many feathers, don't they? Make them look really, really big. Joshua has held an owl before. How exciting. You have one that lives in the garden in your sycamore tree. Oh, wow. Now, does it make a noise at night? I wonder. Um, let's have a look. Bird of prey centre that lets you hold owls. Oh, wow. Lucky you. Um, dissected its pellets. Oh, that sounds interesting. Found out what it eats. Um, Let's have a look. Who else? Yes, pet barn owl called Barney. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. You go to brownies and your leader's called brown owl. <laughs> you get to meet an owl every week. How wonderful. Oh, someone loves horned owls. Yeah, they are really unusual looking, aren't they? Their feathers in the shape of, of horns on their heads. Some of you hear owls in the nighttime. Well, there you go. There's something to get you thinking this week. And maybe that's something you want to explore more yourself. Have a look at owls this week. Uh, maybe you'll even get scraptastic and we'll have some owl creations this week too. Well, back to our nature walks now, and we're going to hear from two more Pathfinders who went on a very busy nature walk. Let's hear from Ollie and Freddie. Ollie, who is six and a half, Freddie, who's five and a half, um, produced a brilliant nature walk video. I cannot wait for you to see it. Are you sitting comfortably? Let's go on a nature walk with Ollie and Freddie. Come 
This is going to be hard to walk. Come on. I mean, we made it to the top, and what a beautiful view! I've got to some few minutes now. We draw with some witty size. Can we see? Let's find a wall then. I have a whole pack of bars. I was like, that's right. And then it's a yeah. wall. I can see one on its own. I the bird in a nut hut and a robin. My is a bird is a dead. This week, we've been to the beach and the nature resource. Listen, I can hear some clothes up there. Look, natural. All that is tree at some of the clothes. I'm not buddy. Fantastic. Big well done to Ollie and Freddie for taking us along on that nature walk. Wow, you run everywhere, you two. <laughs> that was brilliant. I loved the view from the top of that hill that you climbed. You got a brilliant view of the winter sky from up there, didn't you? And so many different types of birds. That bird feeder was brilliant. I wonder if any of you noticed a bird that wasn't on the bird feeder, but that was down on the ground. Ooh, who was watching really closely? So well done to Ollie and Freddie and Bethan this week, our brilliant Pathfinder pack presenters. If any of you want to join them and be a Pathfinder pack presenter and take us on one of your nature walks, then do get in touch. If you, and I noticed a comment earlier, that I've missed a message from somebody. So I'm really sorry about that. I will get in touch with you. But if um, you're keen on doing it, then you can drop me an email, mums and dads, um, or grannies and granddads, or whoever you're watching with, um, kirsty at twinkle.co.uk. Uh, you can email me. Um, I've just given you the wrong email address. It's Kirsty. right, I'll change it. It's Kirsty Dorling, D-O-R-L-I-N-G at twinkle.co.uk. I forgot my second name. Um, I'll change that and pop it up again at the end. So, um, yeah, if you'd love to be a Pathfinder presenter, we'd love to have you along. And next week, we'll hear from two more of you who are going to take us on your nature walks. Can't wait for that. Well, are we ready for a story, Pathfinders? What do you think? Story time's got to be one of my favourite bits of Pathfinders. And today's story... I thought we'd do right here. I haven't recorded it in advance. I thought I'd tell you a story right here, right now today. I've got some pictures to help us along, but we can also imagine in our heads, can't we? So get yourselves cosy and comfortable. Are you ready for a story? Today's story is called The Stars in the Sky. There was once a young girl who was 
fascinated by the beautiful stars in the sky each night. She longed to travel to the stars and play amongst them. So one day, she picked up her fishing net and set off in search of a star. What, is she going to try and swoop and catch one with her net? Oh, I'm not sure if she'll have much luck. She remembered seeing some stars twinkling in the water, so she headed to the pool by the water wheel. A frog told her, Oh yes, they glisten in the water here every night. Ribbit. A frog told her, Dip your net in here and you'll soon find a glistening star in there. She dipped her net into the pool again and again and again, but she could not find a star. So next she headed down to the stream. Maybe there would be a star there. A heron arrived saying, oh yes, when the evening comes, a star appears floating in the stream. If you paddle here for long enough, I'm sure you'll find it. The girl paddled and splashed and splashed and paddled, but she still could not find a star. On she went to the clearing in the woods where the fairies liked to play. I'm looking for stars in the sky to play with. Have you seen any? She asked. Oh, yes. The stars shine here every night, the fairies said. Dance with us a while and you'll soon find a star. They danced and danced until the girl's feet were sore, but still no stars appeared. The girl sighed. Oh, I've dipped my net again and again. I've paddled for hours in the stream and I've danced until I could no more. Will I ever find a star to be my friend? The fairies whispered to one another and then one of them said, ask four feet to carry you to no feet at all and tell no feet at all to carry you to the stairs without steps. What? said the girl. It's a riddle, said the fairies giggling. Hmm, will I find the stars then? The girl said excitedly. Oh yes, the fairy said giggling. And the girl walked away, repeating the rhyme again. Ask four feet to carry you to no feet at all. Tell no feet at all to carry you to the stairs without steps. Oh, well, that's confusing, she said. Just as she rounded the next corner, she saw a horse by a tree. Aha! Four feet! <laughs> Ask four feet to carry me. Oh, please, will you carry me? She rode the horse over fields, past rivers, down hills and winding paths, until at last they reached the sea. Here's where I leave you, said the horse, bowing its head. But, but where will I find the next thing to carry me? You were supposed to bring me to no feet at all. The horse just smiled and trotted away. Oh, where will I find no feet at all? Suddenly, there was a splash far out at sea and the girl saw a dolphin. It has no feet at all. Please let me, let, please can you carry me to the stairs without steps? She asked. Before long, Oh, she rode on the dolphin's back and before long, a glistening path appeared in the sea in front of her. A steep, sloping path. Well, that will lead me up to the sky. She climbed and climbed, but with no luck. She just wasn't getting nearer to the stars, no matter how hard she climbed. In fact, it felt as though she was sinking. 
cloud of bubbles around her. She realised she hadn't even left the sea. Suddenly, she landed with a bump. Ouch! said the girl. Had she reached the bottom of the seabed? She opened her eyes and to her surprise, she found herself, well, not at the bottom of the seabed, at the bottom of her bed, at home. It was all a dream, the girl said, turning to look through her window and seeing the beautiful stars she had longed to meet. Would she ever meet them? The end. Ah, oh, all of that was just a dream. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't see that ending coming, did you? How closely were you listening to our story time today? Shall we do some questions? Right, get ready then. You can shout these answers out. We're going to go through them quickly. You can type them in the comments if you want them, want to, or tell the person next to you, or just call out the answer. So, first one is, here it comes. Where did the girl go first in search of the stars? <clears throat> Where did she go first? Where was the first place she went to? It was... To the water wheel, the pool by the water wheel. Well done. Next question, who was four legs in the story? That was a puzzling riddle, wasn't it, from the fairies? Who was four legs? Of course, are you shouting? It was the horse. Well done. How about this one? Who was no legs at all? Ask four legs to carry you to no legs at all. It was, can I hear you? The dolphin. Well done if you said that. And why did the frog and the heron tell her that there were stars in the water? Hmm, this might take some more thinking about. Well, we didn't really find the answer to that in the story, did we? So why do you think they said that there were stars in the water? Ah, lots of you are saying, yes, it was probably the reflection of the stars. Of course. Well done, guys. I thought you'd get that. So what happened at the end of the story, right at the very end? Hmm. Can you remember? Yeah, it was just a dream. Wow. Have you ever had a really, really strange dream like that? I mean, that is and, and one that feels like it goes on forever and ever. What a strange dream. So, OK, if it was all a dream, then are there any truths in this story? So these old fables and myths and legends, there's often little glimmers of truth hiding in them. What do you think the truth is in this story? Is there any? Hmm. I'll leave you with that one to think about. Maybe you can talk more about it after our session. Well done, guys. Fantastic. You were quick on those answers. My goodness. Right. We've reached one of my favourite bits of Pathfinders. It's time to get Scraptastic. So every week in Pathfinders, we have a new Scraptastic challenge. So let's have a quick recap, because some of you were busy after our very last session of 2023, and you did some brilliant Scraptastic activities. Shall we take a quick peek at those first? OK, let's see what you've all been up to. What a brilliant time you've all been having. I loved all oh, those creations made me feel all cosy and wintry. Well done, everyone. Well, let's take a look at our Scraptastic challenge for this week. Have a look at what I've been making. Let's get Scraptastic. For this Scraptastic creation, I need scissors, a pencil, some ribbon or string, some pens or paints and some cards. I've started by drawing the outline of my stars 
and then cut them out. I've decided to decorate mine with some nice bright colours, but you can decorate yours however you like. Next, I've made holes in the top of each star and threaded a ribbon or a piece of string through. Do the same with all the stars and then choose where to display them. These are going to really brighten up my window in the cold winter days. What will you make this week? Well, they've come out of my window just for now to show you. <laughs> there's my, I think they're kind of more like disco stars, aren't they? Um, so there's one idea of a Scraptastic challenge, but there's lots more in your planning pack. So you could make some stars like I have, or have a look at some of the other suggestions in the Pathfinder planning pack. If you haven't downloaded it yet, mums and dads, the link is with this video. Pathfinder planning pack is what you need um, with loads more ideas to expand everything we've touched on in this session into a whole hours and hours of learning uh, and fun. Well done. Right. So I can't wait to see them. So share those with us in the Facebook group next week or during this week. The sharing post will go up tonight at six o'clock. So drop your um, scraptastic creations in the comments and we'll get sharing those next week. I can't wait to see what you create with the winter sky as your theme. Um, those of you who were interested in um, being Pathfinder presenters, this is the email to send um, uh, an email to. Just send it with the subject line Pathfinder presenters would be really helpful so I can spot them easily. Um, and I'll add you to the list because um, we have lots of you all waiting to take us on your nature walks. How exciting. Well, I'll leave you there, Pathfinders, and let you get on with your day. We've got languages at lunch coming up. Who's going along to that? Me. <laughs> We're back learning Spanish this term. Um, so go and join Be um, Beth and Patricia for that. It will be super fun. That's coming on at the earlier time of 12 o'clock. So you've got time to grab a snack and then join us for that. And I'll leave you with our Pathfinder blessing, a new one for winter. And I'll see you all next Monday. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you soon, Pathfinders. Bye-bye. Cold mist in the air and frost upon the ground. Nature's winter wonderland is here. It's all around. So go in search of nature and tread new paths with care. Nature might be sleeping, but its signs are everywhere.